cloud implementation, data center industry trends, the dynamic market. Yeah, hi, this is Dan Scarborough from Data Center Hawk. I'm excited today we're um, speaking to the operators in Asia at the moment. So this is our first interview with a, an operator based out of Hong Kong. I've got Michael Chan, who's the executive director for One Asia with me today. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Dan. Nice to meet you right here. Nice to meet you too. Um, I'd love it if for the benefit of our audience, you could just give some background on you and One Asia. That would be a, a good start for the interview. Yes, uh, so uh, I'm responsible for the sales team in, here in uh, Hong Kong. Cool. Okay, so I also helped uh, the group to coordinate uh, any sales business issues uh, uh, in, from the Asia Pacific uh, point of view. We have our footprint, our, our uh, uh, headquarters building in Hong Kong, and then our data center building in Shanghai, Nantong in China also. And we also have our branch offices in uh, set up in uh, Singapore, uh, Thailand, uh, South Korea, as well as in Japan recently. Uh, and in terms of the business, from what I understand, you've got kind of different services. So you've got, you've got I'm assuming you've got it on your website, Cloud Connectivity and Center. Yep. So I'm assuming you offer the full range of, of, of services. Can you just tell us a bit about the services that you're offering to customers? Uh, the we major uh, focus on three uh, uh, aspects. Uh, our core business uh, is uh, co-location services, data center services, which is include the BCP uh, service provisioning, okay? And then uh, we also focus on uh, uh, manager cloud services. Uh, so far in Hong Kong, we are the first uh, uh, express route services provider uh, work together with Microsoft since 2014. Okay, we help them to deploy the first uh, uh, express route in Hong Kong, which is a 10 gig network. Okay, so managed cloud services also being one of the major uh, 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 product that we are working on uh, from the market. And then we also offer connectivities uh, to the market, in particular for China, Hong Kong bandwidth. Uh, we have our fixed network license uh, in China, so we can deliver uh, local loop as well as cross-border, uh, 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 IEPL, just like uh, uh, dark fiber services, something like that uh, across China and Hong Kong region. Interesting. So in terms of your co-location footprint in APAC, is it just the two data centers, the one in Hong Kong and the one in Shanghai, or are you offering colo throughout, throughout Asia? Uh, we have uh, three data center building in Hong Kong, uh, one in Shanghai and one in Nantong, one in Singapore, one and three coming data center, which is located in uh, Thailand, uh, South Korea, as well as in uh, Japan. And, and just for the benefit of our kind of our audience, can you give us an idea of the size of these data centers in terms of um, IT load? So like IT, meg megawatts of IT Space. Uh, for example, in Hong Kong, our data center is carry is delivering is a sixteen megawatt, two sixteen megawatt, uh, uh, IT IT load, uh, uh, to the customers. Is that in one data center, or is that across? Is that across the three, or? I'm talking only one, only one. So when when we're talking two megawatts in in one in 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 one of your sites in Hong Kong, uh, sixteen megawatt in one data center. What about the others and the ones in um, in Shanghai? Uh, their power is double up; is around thirty two, and then in Namtong is around uh, fifty megawatt uh, 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 power that we could supply to the to the customer. And in terms of your occupancy rates, how are you seeing your occupancy rates? Are you are you pretty full, or have you got a lot of spare capacity? What's the where is your vacancy and, and, and rates at across your kind of your portfolio, specifically Hong Kong, maybe Singapore and Shanghai? In Hong Kong, our occupancy of data centers is around uh, 60 to 70 percent already. Uh, the Fantastic. data center in production uh, since uh, 2018. So just around three, three years only. And we make around uh, 60 to 70 occupancy. Uh, of the data center okay awesome. 
And is that and, the same in the other markets, or is that is it uh, uh, same case in Shanghai? In Shanghai, because quite a lot of our customer will subscribe two sites: one in Shanghai and one in 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 in, in Hong Kong. And then together with uh, connectivity is linked together with two data center. So in in Shanghai, uh, our sales return is also similar, around seventy. Uh, 70 percent of uh, uh, occupancy uh, so far and the site uh, deployed since uh, 2017 so one year elder of a uh, Hong Kong data center and, and in terms of where you're seeing the demand coming so if, if you think about I know you mentioned Microsoft but yeah. are you seeing demand coming from US and APAC cloud providers is it equal or you know if you look at your customer base how much of it's kind of Asian versus American, like the bats versus the, the, the kind of Microsoft, Googles, et cetera? Uh, from our business uh, scope point of view, uh, recently, uh, there is a, one of very big cloud uh, service platform provider just joined in our data center who are ha- having to make use of our data center, which is uh, occupied at 2.4. Oh, two whole four. four. Two floors. Two whole four. Four. Two whole four, yeah. And it's this is one Kong, of the... That's in Hong Kong, is it? That's or? in Hong Kong. That's in Hong Kong. Uh, this is one of the very big cloud services provider. Uh, so our customer source are very variable from North American, uh, from European, uh, as well as um, most likely, and, and we are very target to grab much more uh, Chinese-based customers. Because in, ter- in terms of the business industry, uh, we are very focused on several uh, industries, which is include bank and finance, uh, ISP, uh, as well as a cloud solution provider, and then some kind of uh, uh, online business provider. This is our major customer uh, uh, focus so far in, from the market. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Have you seen, so, you know, we hear a lot about kind of enterprise customers moving to the cloud. Have you seen the, the a reduction in your enterprise clients over the last couple of years as your cloud customers have increased? Yes, significantly. Uh, we can see quite a lot of customers who are traditionally making use of co-location services. Uh, they have a very decent plan to decrease the number of rack that they, they have to hold by themselves. And then they will migrate quite a lot of their IT load and services into the cloud platform, surface, surface platform. So they will decrease the demand uh, from the colocation directly, but uh, increase more, more rely on the cloud solution services provider. So in return, uh, we are trying to shift our business focus from those banking customers because they will use less uh, 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 red services, but we will try to approach much more cloud solution provider or any kind of uh, a service hosting provider in order uh, to grab uh, their uh, uh, rep demand uh, into our data center. Okay, so 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 coming back to some of the other markets, you mentioned earlier that you've got a data center that you're you've got in in Bangkok. Um, uh, we are having to build our data center in Bangkok, not in production so far. Right, but but in terms of like some of the new less tier one markets like. Indonesia, Vietnam, Bangkok, what demand are you seeing co- co- coming from those markets uh, for your customers? Are you seeing that, that increasing dramatically or is that, you know, what sort of increase are you seeing in demand for, for some uh, of the newer markets? Honestly, we have quite a confidence level that the Asian market, in particular those uh, countries you, you just mentioned, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, as well as uh, Thailand, of course, because we already invest, uh, invested uh, uh, land and then we are having to build our own data center, which is, will be uh, on production from uh, 2022. That means uh, around two years later, we already uh, uh, acquiring uh, peoples uh, from that countries. And we, uh, what, what, what we are looking forward to is we feel that uh, there will be quite a lot of uh, uh, European base or, um, or North American base uh, man- uh, manufacturer shifting their factory from China to those Asian country. Oh, it's okay. It's For example, Apple, you know, Apple is shifting, shifting 
uh, their manufacturing factory from China to India. Okay, and, you know, and you're you know seeing what, that a lot, are you? Are you seeing quite a lot of that? Yeah, quite a lot of that. Uh, those uh, 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 Garmin uh, 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 or vehicle manufacturer, you name it, we we, we can see. Uh, there will be a, a, a quite a lot of uh, industries shifting their, their foundation or their base camp from China to any other uh, 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 North, America, uh, North Asia countries, just like uh, Vietnam, Thailand, as well as India, of course. So uh, we have, as a data center services provider, uh, it, which is one of the very base infrastructure that uh, we have to be a pioneer before those, the arrival of those uh, uh, factory, of those uh, end user. We have to build our foundation so that they have a farm to, to build in their IT farm, their IT service platform to run their business over there. No, that's interesting. So you're, so from a, a kind of a strategic perspective, you're looking at expanding into these newer markets quite rapidly, sure. I would imagine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so are you seeing are you seeing that um, kind of demand from those types of customers is shifting from you know the traditional base of say Hong Kong, maybe Singapore, which is reaching its kind of uh, its full capacity. So, are you seeing that the demand is kind of moving from markets like Hong Kong into those locations? Yes, yes, and in fact, we also recognize that some of the uh, banking customer who traditionally uh, having their uh, Asian headquarter built in Hong Kong, they are also shifting their Asian headquarter to Singapore. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so, 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 one of the things that I saw on your website, I, I when I was looking, I saw modular data centers. It looks like you've got a modular data center offering or an edge offering. How are you seeing that kind of edge market? The kind of more kind of I don't know, 5G edge deployment. Are you seeing a lot of demand for that? And is that something that you're involved in at all? Uh, so far, we, we, we don't have any direct involvement uh, from the 5G market or the industry that we're involved. But I think uh, uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, they still, for those mobile operators uh, or any uh, network services provider, they also need the data center to host uh, their network equipment. So I think uh, we will be one of the major uh, uh, puzzle, piece of puzzle for them to build, their ne- to build their network, to help them to build their network. And do you, do you see yourselves with your one data center in Shanghai? I mean, we hear about the China market. You know, yeah. I think there are, I mean, the number of cities in China with like over 10, 15 million people. China is a huge market, right? Yes. You see yourselves expanding your presence in China outside of Shanghai? Yeah, of course. We have uh, our data center farm in Namtong. Namtong is, is a city which is around uh, 150 km, kilometer uh, far from uh, the uh, Shanghai main city. But it's also uh, under the uh, Shanghai government management. Okay, and Namtong is one of three major cloud service farm that have been uh, 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 nominated by the Chinese government. So uh, the Chinese government had already been uh, building quite a lot of uh, basic infrastructure, uh, which has included sufficient power supply. You know, uh, uh, electri- electricity power supply in China is very critical. Uh, it's hundred percent controlled by the government. So uh, the uh, Nam Tong is one of the place, what, uh, one or three of the place uh, have got the blessing from the Chinese government who could got sufficient power supply over there. So we have a land uh, owned by, by our group and we have already built the first batch of a data center uh, building over there. We are, we are the neighborhood of uh, Alibaba to be exact. And how, how big is, just to give a bit of context, how big will that server farm in Nam Chung B when it's, when it's fully developed in terms of megawatts? Oh, megawatts. So far, our plan is 100 megawatt over there. Right. And what are the other two locations? So you've got Nam Chung as one. And what are the other Nam Tong is, uh, the, so far, Nam Tong uh, is our biggest data center farm uh, in our group. 
and then the second launch will be in Shanghai, Houdong. All right. But when you said the Chinese government is investing in three regions from a yep. power yep. perspective, is well, that- one in Namtong and, and the other one uh, is uh, in uh, I forget it in somewhere in in Beijing. Right. I, I just forgot forgot the name. I I can I can give you uh, the the name of other two places uh, later. So, just, but you see yourself as kind of developing further locations in China over and above Namchang as 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 your business develops. Yes, yes, it's our plan. But so far, we we got our uh, uh, data center building in Shanghai and Namtong only so far. Okay, so I wanted to move on quickly if we can to kind of um, some questions around sustainability. That's okay. With with you know what sort of in terms of the power mix and like you know we're hearing a lot of of especially in Europe of the pressure on um, data center operators to kind of commit to forms of sustainability, renewable energy. Lots of the customers are kind of are making commitments of zero carbon, etc. How do you guys you know do you see a lot of that d- demand coming from your customers? in Asia that they're interested in what your power mix is? Are you investing in things like PPAs, power purchase agreements for renewable energy, or what's the kind of energy mix that you're, you're working on at, across your data centers? Uh, I heard that, uh, as you said, uh, there are uh, uh, various of uh, energy source choose it's uh, from the European countries or even from a North American but in Hong Kong or else in China, uh, unfortunately, we don't have much cho- choices. Choices. Not much choice. Yeah. Not much choice. Honestly, uh, uh, we generally in, in China, uh, the electricity only supplied by coal or even by uh, nuclear. But most of them are by 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 coal. You know, yeah. they are in, in in a trade war between Australia. So so yeah. far, the electricity power. Supply in China is quite critical. Yeah, at, you, at the moment, are you seeing that? Are you seeing any kind of uh, industry bodies developing that are kind of looking at at renewable energy? And you know, are you looking at like on-site power generation for any of your sites, or kind of grid integration with like hydrogen fuel cells, or or things like that? Are you is that something that you've been looking at as an organization? Uh, yes, uh, from the technical point of view, we have a team, and to be exact, it's our subsidiary. Uh, the, na- the, the name of our subs- subsidiary is New Tech. Uh, they are uh, one of the very famous uh, uh, experts from the, from the market who help uh, quite a lot of bank and finance customers to build and to develop their data center, to design their data center. So what the uh, power strategy that it is one of the, their major topics. They will have a team of experts to, 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 to explore. And most likely, we will uh, take reference from them. They will sit as our consultants uh, to enhance or to monitor our power strategy to see which uh, kind of uh, type of power, that, power source that we should use uh, to much more facilitate our business. Uh, as well as uh, from the daily operation point of view. Uh, yes, but as I sa- said before, from Hong Kong uh, side, we don't have much uh, choices. Yeah. yeah. We, we can only rely on two dedicated power supply in Hong Kong and one in Kowloon side and the other one in Hong Kong side. If, if you, you, you are familiar with Hong Kong, the geography of, of Hong Kong, we have no choice. We can only rely on one single yeah. no, I mean, I, power I remember, supply company. So I remember New Tech from like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago yeah. uh, when I was working out in Hong Kong. And I also remember Hong Kong, you know, it's particularly challenging from a real estate perspective as well, right? It's, uh, exactly. Um, and, and I'm assuming it's as equally challenging from a power perspective as it yeah. is from a real estate perspective so we have such kind of knowledge but we don't have much choice honestly yeah yeah no i get you i understand i understand well listen michael i've really really enjoyed speaking to you thank you so much for taking the time to to talk with us we're excited about our development in asia and kind of sharing information from the asian operators with the other community that we work with and and we'd love to continue to kind of monitor your progress as you grow and see how we can we can continue to work together so thank you very much for your time you're welcome sure